Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are taking a look at this, which is the uh, Sinclair Spectrum 1 to 8K, or affectionately known as the Toast Rack. So, um, I mean, to really talk about this, we have to kind of delve a little bit into the history of Sinclair as well. A few commentators just believe I should just go straight into the topic at hand. It's not how I do things. Sorry. So... I mean, if you're here, you probably already know about the Sinclair Spectrum, but uh, anyway, this was the original model. So this is the, uh, the original ZX Spectrum, released in 1982 as a low-cost uh, low color computer by uh, Sir Clive Sinclair's Sinclair Research Company. It, um, it was massively successful. It is credited with kickstarting the UK's interest in computers and the IT industry, and uh, has a fairly good argument for being the computer that really kickstarted the modern gaming industry as we know it which mostly began in England of course so uh yep yeah, but after this with its um <laughs> uh divisive is is one way of saying uh, rubber keyed membrane keyboard they uh Sinclair moved on uh, not very far admittedly they moved on to the plus and we will start to see some of this design come through so this is the plus uh, and it has this kind of more chiclet plastic key system instead it's um well it's certainly an improvement over the rubber keyboard that's as far as i'll go on that. Uh, and really this didn't add a huge amount uh, a slightly larger case uh, like more professional uh, looking because so clive kind of expected the veteran to be a business machine rather than a game machine he wasn't particularly happy that it became uh, synonymous with games but it did and we're all thankful for that i think um, but yeah, all it really did was was change the case, the keyboard, and it added uh, a much requested, oh, no. which is missing from mine. I've just noticed uh, because I borrowed it for a different machine. <laughs> but, but anyway, there's a, a generally a reset button on the side. This is a model that I'm currently fixing, so the reset button isn't on there. Um, but that was really the only change uh, to show for it, and, and this got. Released in 1984, a couple of years after the previous version. Now, in this time, the computer industry had been growing, obviously, and becoming slightly more important. Governments were starting to pay attention. Obviously, the British government got invested uh, in it, and uh, with the aid of the BBC, started the Computer Literary Programme, which helped finance the Acon's BBC Micro product. And, like, France uh, had uh, commissioned the Thomson company to make the Thomson uh, range of computers and they'd help to finance that etc etc. Uh, Spain also had uh, <laughs> uh, an interest in, in getting computers off the ground. They wanted to make it a more of a, uh, a native industry which makes a lot of sense obviously that's that's how you grow your GDP you get native industry and they brought a couple of rules and regulations in. Now a background to uh, the Spectrum in this sense. So the Spectrum sold quite well in Spain Sinclair partnered with a company called Investronica, and they had done a really good job of positioning the uh, the Spectrum in, in the Spanish markets. Um, they'd pushed the, the Plus model, but then the Spanish government brought in two new regulator, regulatory changes, which meant that the Sinclair had to have one of its biggest updates up to this point. So the uh, Spanish government added uh, a new tax on any computers that had less than or equal to 64k and obviously that pretty much covered most of the the big free computers so commodore 64 the uh, amstrad uh, cpc range at that point and again obviously the single spectrum so uh the first two having 64k memory and the spectrum having 48k they also added in a uh, a regulation that all computers sold locally had to support the spanish uh character set with its extra accents and what have you and also have message in spanish all pretty you know that's fair enough uh, if you're selling machine in spain it should support the local language but these two things obviously uh, were a bit of a sticking point for the 40 k spectrum in either guise now the language and the keyboard that's just a matter of changing the rom and uh, and adding uh reprinting the keys that was easy enough but the uh 64k uh, limit that was a problem now, the reason why that was a problem was because the, the Sinclair Spectrum is based on the Z80 uh, processor by Zilog. And that has a 16-bit address space. And that means the most memory it can natively address is 64K. 
Obviously, that is the top limit of the of the tax, new tax. So to avoid the tax, the Spectrum had to address more memory. Now, it wasn't Sinclair that solved this problem. It was in Investronica. They came up with an idea of using bank switching to support 128K memory. So what they effectively did is, so the Sinclair Spectrum could uh, natively support 64K, and then the extra memory required to get it to 128K was split into 16K chunks, and then the programmer could swap those chunks into the address space at, uh, at will. Uh, and it made it a 128K machine. They didn't just stop there, though, which is uh, the good thing is they could have done. They could have literally released a machine. They could have had a Spanish keyboard. They could have changed the ROM so that it had Spanish error messages and then added the 128K, and that would have been enough to sell it in Spain. But they didn't. They uh, they fought ahead, and they, they considered if they're making such a huge change to the Spectrum, then they may as well make more changes. And those changes are were really welcome to uh, to all of the owners of spectrums and the main one being the inclusion of the ay3 8912 sound chip the spectrum has unique sound i think is probably the best way of putting it it had a built-in speaker so if i bring back the the original specky you see down here there's a little grill here there's actually a little dime speaker in there and uh, that produced uh, what could best be described as a cacophony of noise not good at all, uh, and both the Amstrad and the Commodore 64 were capable of producing music. The Commodore 64 especially had its uh, iconic SID chip, which still sounds, I personally think, great today. So one of the things Investronica decided to change was to add the sound chip in to give the Spectrum more capability in sound. Uh, with that, they also pumped the sound out through the television rather than through the, the speaker, and the speaker was moved entirely. Uh, another very welcome uh, change. The chip also supported MIDI, so they added some uh, basic commands to support MIDI. In fact, the, the ROM entirely was increased, uh, not only to add in, um, so it had support for the, the Spanish language as well in the Spanish regions, but also they gave it a nice little boot menu with a tape tester option, which was a really welcome option to a machine that used tapes. Uh, trying to get the right level and stuff on, on a tape player was really difficult. The tape tester gave you a little uh, on-screen thing where you could kind of dial that in a little bit better, and it really did help quite a lot. It was um, it was a really good addition. And also they increased the uh, basic as well. They added a lot more functionality. A lot of that obviously is to do with the sound because they increased sound functions. They also gave a way of switching into raw 48K basic. So any game that was not entirely compatible with the new ROM switching, you could switch into the Spectrum mode and it would make it more compatible. This means that a lot more games were compatible with the, uh, the 1 to 8K. There were still a few that had issues because of the using addresses that were tied into the bank switching. And um, they added the MIDI commands in as well. So you could play and uh, record MIDI samples, which was not entirely so it became more useful later on, but certainly it was an interesting little, <laughs> little addition to the thing. Now, one of the other big changes they made, which was again, very welcome, was the addition of an RGB port. Now this meant that you could natively plug in a, a SCART lead into the Spectrum and get a much better picture before we were tied to the RF, which is was never ideal. Certainly it's a, a lot better in memory than it is nowadays. If you try now on a, on a CRT even, it, it looks really horrible, but back in the day I remember it looking completely fine. <laughs> That's what memory does for you. They uh, released this, designed this new one to 8K. They released it uh, into the market into Spain first. So this was first released in uh, 1985 in September and it was released at the uh, CIMO trade show, a Spanish uh, trade show. Uh, it wasn't released actually into the UK, which is obviously the because of the, the Sinclair's home market until January the following year because Sinclair was basically sitting on unsold Spectrum Pluses. Uh, so they didn't want to add a new skew to the market. But it's an interesting one because it, it really does mean that we missed out on quite a lot of the sales of the 1 to 8K, because that same year, 1986, was the year that uh, Sinclair effectively threw the towel in and Amstrad purchased the rights to the Sinclair Spectrum. So this was the the last Sinclair Spectrum that Sinclair actually oversaw, uh, the last released model. Uh, because of that, it's obviously also the rarest because there just weren't many sold because it wasn't around for very long. Amstrad, when uh, they purchased it, they used this as a base for the first of their models, so the Plus 2 model. So the Plus 2 is very similar to this, to the Toast Rack. But um, I think it lacks some of the charm. The 
I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the Amstrad models because they really are just rebadged uh, versions of their Amstrad. Obviously, with a Sinclair innards, but they look almost identical to the CPC range of computers, which I don't hate the, the Amstrad. I'm certainly a bigger fan of them now, now that I own them afterwards. Back in the day, obviously, there was a huge, huge rivalry <laughs> in the playgrounds between Sinclair, Commodore, and Amstrad owners. Um, I certainly in my playground, predominantly the Sinclair crowd were there. I, we come from. I came from quite a poor background, and Sinclair was by far the cheapest option, so that probably explains that. Um, so, but I think they lack the overall charm of this, just because they were already the, the shape of the the design was already done in the Amstrad CPC range. Change of the color didn't really make a huge amount of difference. But yeah, it's a charming machine. It's it's really nice. Uh, so. I uh, I'm really happy to get one. I I've, I've been after one for a while because it was the last of the of the breed. I never got one of these again um poor family, so I only had the original. I did eventually get the Amstrad Plus 3 model, the disk drive model which I've shown off in another video. Uh that was um yeah, my family got a little bit more <laughs> a little bit more money at that point. My mum had uh, got quite a uh, a high level job in a factory and so I got a, a slightly more expensive present in, in that. So I completely skipped this version. So owning it's really nice. I got this as part of a bundle auction, which came with a couple of other Spectrums. Uh, in fact, that Plus that I'm still repairing was one of them. Uh, all of them were broken, including this. But this just had a dodgy voltage regulator. Once I replaced that, it started working, which made me incredibly happy. <laughs> Spectrums are basically repairable. Um, there's not many chips you can't replace now. ULA is tricky to replace, but there are alternatives when you can get them. Yeah, well, that's the uh, the one to AK Spectrum. Some games took advantage of it. Uh, a lot of multi loaders, if they had a one to eight option, they'd be able to load up more memory, obviously, more of the game into memory. Obviously, some of them got rid of multi load altogether because of that. Uh, obviously, uh, quite a few games took uh, advantage of the AY chip, uh, and I mean the sound is at least as good as the Amstrad uh, to the Atari ST level esque. Uh, and some of them really nice. Uh, plus, it also meant that a few games were able to have music in the actual game because they could offload that to the actual chip rather than trying to do it all with the uh, just the CPU. The Spectrum obviously not having, up to this point, dedicated sound hardware, so uh, wasn't able to do that. Yeah, it's a really nice machine. Um, if you can get one, then uh, it's definitely worth getting, I think, because they're just like it's, it's a it's a weirdly iconic shape, even though. If you talk to someone about Spectrum, they'll go for the rubber key model because that is the genuinely iconic shape. But in terms of uh, pleasing design, this is just, it's so nice. I mean, considering the fact I'm not a huge fan of the Plus, <laughs> and it's the same. I mean, if you look there, that, that's the, it's the exact same one. Weird enough, the toast rack at the side just kind of, it kind of offsets the design a bit. Weird, I know. I know it's, 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 a, it's a very personal thing. But I, uh, I do think that this is uh, a, an iconic looking model. Plus, it's massively backward compatible as well, including with hardware. Which, again, was something you, you couldn't say for the Amstrad models. They they had their quirks for backward compatibility. Generally only with things that didn't play by the rules, admittedly. So, you know, can't entirely blame them for that. Right. I think that's probably it for this. <laughs> As one final thing, what I will say is that I'm particularly impressed with Amstrad's way of getting around the uh, the new Spanish tariff. Basically, they added a daughter board with 8K extra RAM into the 464 to give it 72K. 
but that RAM was completely not addressable by the machine at all in any way. They, but they claimed that the new version of BASIC that was included in the Spanish version required the memory, and that's it. It got past all of the tariffs. <laughs> Complete and utter tax job dodge, and it was utterly pointless, but just it saved them so much money it was worth doing. I mean, I, I, you've got to respect that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time.